welcome along to another episode of the Saints FC podcast hosted on the Ugly Insides YouTube channel. And this week the Saints FC podcast were invited to Saints Staplewood training ground in Marchwood where the UK Media 11, including John from the podcast, were playing against a Mauricio Pellegrino 11 made up from coaching staff, ex-players and staff from around the Southampton Football Club. John gets the chance to speak with Mauricio himself and ask him a few questions about his time at Saints and how it's going. He gets to play football with the three-time La Liga winner, ex Sevilla, Barcelona, Liverpool and Argentinian international. But there's no prizes for guessing which team won. As well as speaking to Mauricio, John speaks to Greg Bukowski from The Guardian and The Guardian Football Weekly Podcast and Jack Bazantz from The Daily Mail and Tony Husband from BBC South Today. So without further ado, over to John for this week's episode. Welcome to the Saints FC podcast. Uh, my name is John Bailey. Uh, thank you very much for listening in. Uh, this week's episode is um, a bit of a, a different one from the usual episode, and it's not one that I would have necessarily ever really expected to make. So um, what you're going to hear this time is a few bits and pieces, some recordings uh, from my trip down to Marchwood on the outskirts of Southampton to go and visit Um, the Staplewood training facility and meet uh, Maurizio Pellegrino, our under fire manager, and many of the kind of Saints FC coaching staff. Um, A rather bizarre invite that I got um, from Virgin Media, who organized uh, the whole day. And they invited me to take part as part of the UK Sports Media 11 versus the Maurizio Pellegrino 11, which included an 11 aside match against Uh, the Saints uh, coaching squad, um, a little bit of a training session and even a chance to speak to Maurizio Pellegrino himself. So um, you'll get to hear me put my questions to the manager um, and hear what he had to say from that. But also I get a few little bits and pieces uh, from the day, uh, interview some of the journalists who are also taking part in the day um, and you can get to hear their views and thoughts on the manager and the day itself. So um, we're now going to go back in time uh, to the 8th of November and experience my little trip down to Staplewood. So hello everyone, I'm currently in Paddington Station, Uh, interesting day ahead of me um, today. Uh, Last week I got an email from uh, Mr Jamie Clark at Virgin Media saying, Hi John, I hope you're well, you've been selected by Virgin Media to take part in a Maurizio Pellegrino 11 uh, versus UK Sports Media 11 at Southampton's training ground during the international break on Wednesday the 8th of November. Now, the morning has come. Um, I've arrived at Pennington Station where we're going to be catching a coach down to uh, Marchwood and then getting a chance to meet uh, Maurizio Pellegrino and then um, we're going to be having a training session with him and then then a game against him, 11 aside. Uh, It's been a long time since I've played 11 aside football. Uh, I've played a bit of 9 aside at work, a bit of 6 aside. Uh, but I've got to be honest, I even had to go out and buy a new pair of boots uh, just for this. Bit, a bit of a kind of a unusual one. I certainly wouldn't necessarily call myself a member of the UK sports media, but I suppose doing this kind of podcast throws you into that, whether, whether that's how you think of yourself or not. But very, very interesting to be heading down to Southampton's training facilities, get a chance to meet the manager and, and see what it's like down there. Um, so I'll hopefully get a good chance to record Maurizio and uh, we'll, we'll play back some of his uh, answers to our questions a little bit later on so uh, we've just arrived uh, in Marchwood at the Staplewood campus the, the Southampton training facility 
um, came down on a bus with a group of journalists from Guardian, Mirror, Sun, Daily Mail, uh, Independent. Uh, they're going to be my teammates today, and we're just having a little little wander around the pitches and having a look um, before we have our big game against Pellegrino and Co. So uh, we've had a little tour around uh, the Staplewood campus, had a look up in the Marcus Lieber Pavilion and look at some of the pitches. Um, yeah, really, really impressive building. Seen some of the first team players. Cedric Suarez was in the gym. Uh, Mario Lamina was looking uh, super cool, leaving the first team dressing room. And um, we've now been sent uh, down to the grandstand where the under-23s play. We're in the away team dressing room. I think there's only 11 of us, so... Um, well, I'm going to start getting into our kit and then uh, look forward to the game against the Saints staff. So I now start chatting to some of my teammates, including uh, BBC South Today's Tony Husband, who played up front for our team, and uh, Greg Pukowski, who you may recognise from Guardian Football Weekly, uh, a journalist with The Guardian. As you can see. And then, very simple, 4 4 1 1. <laughs> Simon right back, Jake and Wally centre halves, John left back, and then Peter on the right, Jonathan and Jack in the middle, Sam on the left. Greg playing just off Tony and then um, on the bench to start with will be Andrew, myself and Luke but obviously roll on, roll off subs anytime anyone wants to come off just shout but um, yeah but yeah just enjoy it and cheers for, for coming down obviously really appreciate it just wanted to show you a little bit more about what we do with the club so um, yeah enjoy yourselves hopefully they'll go easy on us because it sounds like they've got a decent side <laughs> So, uh, Tony, you're going to be up front for the UK Sports Media 11. Um, they've got some pretty good uh, centre-backs, so I think Maurizio Pellegrino is maybe going to be the man marking you. Well, what's, what's Pellegrino done? I mean, he's played, you know, what, Premier League in his latter days. His legs will have gone. Uh, I'm confident we can turn them round. Yeah, and, so, uh, so in a good performance. So you're not, not concerned about coming up against someone who's played in a Champions League final before then? Well, you know, we face challenges, all of us, every day in our job. So, you know, bring it on, eh? Good, good. That's, that's the spirit. Uh, Greg uh, from The Guardian, you're in the Matt Letizia role today for the UK Sports Media 11. How, how do you feel? Are you going to step up and fill his boots? Uh, I'm sure I can, yeah. I'm sure I can move about as much as Matt Letizia did in his latter days. Um, you know, get on the ball, play a few, but I think Tony's up front with me, so obviously we'll strike up a partnership. Will we? I can feel it already. Yeah, I can. Yeah. We've got a rapport already. already yeah. A good rapport. yeah, so I'll be running off Tony and um, I'll be nutmegging Pellegrino. You know, trying to get us on the front foot. Yeah, and you reckon you can get the ball past Kelvin Davis if, if the time, the opportunity presents itself? He's about 75 years old, isn't he? So yeah. I'd like to think so. <laughs> I'm now with the UK Sports Media 11 manager. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us, uh, you know, what, what you're planning to, to beat this Saints uh, coaching staff side? Yeah, so I'm so I'm Dave, um, yeah, and I'm taking the role of manager of UK Sports Media 11 today. And I think, um, you know, for all the talk of British managers not getting opportunities in football nowadays, you know, I'm British, I'm a manager for the day, and I've gone very simple, very British, 4-4-2. And I think... If you look at, you know, they can have all the tactics in the world, they can have all the players they want, but, you know, up against the British. The British 4-4-2, nothing's going to come close. So I'm feeling confident. The lads are looking good. They've all had their whispers and their Mars bars and their two bottles of Lucas Aid each. So I think they're, uh, they're fueled and ready to go. So after we'd had our rousing team talk from Dave from Virgin Media, we then headed up to the first team training pitch and the Marcus Lieber Pavilion, where we got the opportunity to actually meet and interview Pellegrino before we played the match. Um, so the way it worked is each kind of group of journalists, they had a, a group of newspaper writers went in, had about five, 10 minutes with Pellegrino, then came out, another group went in came out and then it was myself and uh, Andrew Moon from the BBC South uh, TV and radio um, to go in and have a chance to ask a few questions uh, to Maurizio. Um, this was obviously the time where my recorder decided <laughs> to mess up um, but uh, Andrew kind of from BBC stepped in, started asking some questions and then you'll hear um, Maurizio answering uh, one of Andrew's first questions before we get into my questions after uh, my recorder started working again, thankfully. Sign my comfort zone because I had to speak in other languages. I had to adapt to a different culture, different 
style uh, in a funnel, and I enjoy it, I like my job. Um, I feel my job like a vocation, and, 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 and to be in Premier League, one of the best league in the world, really, really tough league, really tight league, when there are 10 or 12 or 15 teams that are separate in five or six points. It's a nice challenge for me. Are you the kind of manager who likes to be very active with your boots on joining in in training or more watch from the sideline? No, no. I am. Um, I like to. It is the part that I enjoy more, my job, to be there on the training ground every single day, connecting with my player, uh, try to help them or try to improve them, try to push them to to train 100% and to improve their habits. This is something that I love, or maybe the part that I enjoy more in my, in my job. You mentioned the change of language and culture. I would say your English is, is very good. Mm. Did you train more on your English over the summer? Is it something you just pick up as you go along? I am studying now with Jonathan or with my wife Adam, my English teacher. Uh, but it's something that, because communication for me is crucial to translate idea for my player, is something that we are doing permanently. Um, obviously, it's, it's not easy because the pronunciation is, is the most difficult thing for me. But I am trying to, to improve. Final question for me. You've been at some of the biggest clubs in the world. How does this training complex compare to some in Spain, in, in Liverpool, others you've been at? Oh, it's, it's amazing. This training ground, these facilities are really, really good. We got everything in to, to perform well, to train well, to be happy. Pitches, uh, dressing room, restaurant, accommodation, and everything is office technology. Uh, but we cannot complain. <laughs> we have to, uh, we got everything that we need. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, Maurice. So th thank you very much for speaking to us. Um, in the last four seasons, Southampton have uh, achieved quite a lot. They've finished eighth, sixth, seventh and eighth. Mm. Do you feel with the current squad you've got, we can achieve this again? Yeah, we will see at the end. Maybe, maybe no, maybe yes, maybe better. <laughs> and, but we had to wait until the end because the, the result right now is something that is not fixed um, and the comment and the analysis about position we had to do at the end but okay four years ago five years ago two years ago last year the squad was it was completely different yeah football is not something that you invest money and you will reach your target football is something that is unpredictable you don't know because if not it will be easier if not PSG has to win the Champions League every single year. And this is not happen. Why? Because it's unpredictable. And football teams and sport team got something that is really, really good. 11 players can be better side than 11 good, good or a really, really important player. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next thing, I, I mean, you've had... Um probably about 12 or 13 you know, first team matches now with, with the squad. Do you feel the team is starting to pay, play the kind of Maurizio Pellegrino style of football? And, and if not, you know, what, what more have we got to see to come? How are you going to get them playing the way that you want them to play? In some moments, yes. In some moments, we play well. In some moments, no. And it's part of our, our job. Uh, to build a football team is... It's something that is never finished. Yeah. Because even when you are the first, when you are the first, you have to improve. When you are the second, you have to improve. When you are the eighth, you have to improve a lot. And when, because you always can improve your squad, you can improve your style, especially the offensive job, the offensive system, your connection between your player, you always can reach something more. Yeah. Um, and I wonder, kind of, what football managers do you look up to? Say, um, you know, who are the managers that you would like to kind of perhaps perform similarly in your career as, as a manager? The first thing is, uh, I would like to, to improve my, my players individually. 
on and off the pitch because I think when you improve them mentally, you will improve in all different aspects, yeah. physically, uh, togetherness, uh, ambition. Um, for me, this is my main, main goal, is to improve them mentally and be part of Southampton club that to they had to realize that to be part of this club you are really successful and sometimes okay around every single player there is a big business today and every everybody wants to play everybody wants to score goal but we got 25 players and just 11 can play yeah um, behind the 11 players there is a big team around them uh, okay and I try to look for different ways to try to improve them. Guys, we're going to have to stop because of the match, so we're going to have to get a bit behind time. So, yeah, okay. there'll be questions, there'll be time at the end. That's cool. Right. I'm good with that. Girl. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Mauricio. Okay, nice. Really appreciate okay. it. Okay. So after my brief chat uh, with Pellegrino, we had the chance to then play the match against Pellegrino and his uh, training staff. Um, and you'll hear an out of breath me coming off the pitch and talking about that. Uh, before Jonathan Liu, who is a writer for the independent newspaper, uh, started quizzing Pellegrino again at the end of the game, asked him a few questions, more on his kind of general football philosophy rather than anything um, you know, particularly in depth on the Saints team. Uh, but you'll hear that just coming up now. So uh, just come off the pitch, I maybe mean, substituted off, played nice game in left back a little bit on uh, left midfield. Um, Unsurprisingly, <clears throat> the Saints coaching team are, are winning, but uh, only 2 now, so that's, that's not too bad from uh, our part on the media. And um, saw uh, one of the journos actually managed to get the ball around Pellegrino, which is pretty impressive, so there's one for his his book. And uh, I managed to nutmeg one of the coaching stuff, but I'm trying to look across the pitch and I can't figure out who it was. But yeah, there we go, one, one nutmeg. That's the uh, extent of my achievement in this game. Um, and, but, but definitely didn't make a fool of myself, which is good news. I think uh, it was funny. I think we played against a good side. And you were well, well organized, physically better than I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also, uh, the, the, I think that the most important thing that we enjoy this moment. And thank you for coming. And sometimes it's, it's, it's really good to, to change. Mm. mentally and, <laughs> and try to enjoy this moment what, what why do you still play why do you what what, what makes you still keen to no to i think people? that we used to play every friday or every thursday depend how we play the weekend but because i think uh, when you do something and you can change uh, your habits and and you can know the people a little bit better how they are on the pitch and you can talk a little bit more and because sometimes in the biggest companies, sometimes there are a lot of areas, but you don't know the people that work in them. And football is something that is really good to unite the people, to think about the togetherness, not just inside the pitch, outside the pitch too. And, he, and also, you know, in, in football there are different apartments, doctors, uh, scouting area, analysts, uh, technical, uh, the chef and the people that is like a, a big team behind the team. Um, we use this moment to try to be together. Do you ever play in training? Sorry? Do you ever play with the first team in training? No, no, no. This is another <laughs> another level, another level. But I would like to be in some, some boxes sometime because but the pace and the tempo of them is top level. And, and now I left my profession 20 years ago, more or less. No, sorry, uh, 10 years ago. And um, it's difficult to come back. Do you teach like technical things with the, with the first team or is it mainly tactical and physical? It's, everything is part of, of, of football, no? Technical is, is always uh, outside of, of football. It's nothing, no? but technical decision is the most important thing because technical or or quality for me, the, the word quality that we use every single day is uh, make the right decision in the right moment. How do you train that? And sometimes... Eh? How do you train that? How do you teach players? No, trying, trying to train every single day 
in the way that you want to play. And it's not sometimes we separate the different areas or technical, tactical, <laughs> uh, psychology, or strength, or speed in different ways. But in football, everything is together. This is the most difficult thing. Yeah. What, what, may, what what's, um, makes an elite player? Is, is it what percent is talent and what percent is hard work? If you don't have any talent, it's very difficult to be at this level. Um, in Premier League, no, in Premier League, everybody got talent. Um, but for me, obviously, for this reason, the football is is, some, is beautiful because even when you play a cup game, when you play with the team against that are in the League One, they 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 know that they can beat you. And because in football is is probable, it's unpredictable, but it's probable, and, and it's something that is is really really good. Cool. Okay. Oh, thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that really was all the time that we got to spend with Maurizio. Um, the kind of five or so minutes uh, before the game, and then a, a few minutes again at the end of the match as well. And um, you know, it, it was quite a funny experience. Obviously, I've interviewed quite a few. Uh, ex-players on the Saints FC podcast and I think once you're out of the club you can really open up and you can go a little bit more in depth Um, but when you're in the club itself I I think there's so much emphasis on what you can and can't say in the media Um, it's almost like a I don't know, a slightly more jovial or friendly North Korea. Uh, there's always someone from the, the Saints media team uh, on your shoulder just making sure that you're not asking um, anything you know, awkward or anything like that, which which I, I suppose is fair enough. You know, it's very high stakes. Uh, there's big money and big money involved and, and reputations and jobs on the line. Uh, but absolutely uh, amazing experience just to even go in there and have a little wander around, um, see the facilities that the players train in uh, and get a chance to play against a, a team of Saints coaching staff, but also, you know, the photographer, the kit man, Hugo Schechter, you know, our kind of famous player liaison officer um, were, were all there, all playing. Uh, and one of the things which really comes across is, um, how kind of close knit the Saints staff seem to be um, in, in the training ground. There's, there was a real kind of atmosphere of comfortable, um, you know, friendliness. And Pellegrino actually seemed very, very popular around the ground. He didn't seem like a man who was under pressure or particularly stressed out. Um, and he didn't seem really like the kind of person who would get angry or, or frustrated. So, you know, it's interesting to kind of see that I was expecting you know having gone down to March with just after we'd lost her to Burnley that perhaps we'd see a little bit of frustration a little bit of a mood over the over the kind of Staplewood campus but it wasn't um really there at all um so you know, it, it was a really really fantastic day and uh when we were taking the, the coach uh, back to London, I got a chance to uh, speak to a couple more of the journalists and ask them what they made of the day as well. So um, you're going to hear me having a little chat uh, with Greg Bukowski from The Guardian and also uh, Jack Bazantz, uh from the UK Daily Mail. Um, so we're travelling back on the coach and um, I'm, I'm sat, next to, sat next to Jack Bazantz from the Daily Mail and the Mail Online. Um, Jack, what, what did you make of the day and what did you make of playing against uh, Pellegrino and, and some of the Saints coaching staff? Uh, Pellegrino is still, well, he's, he said to us afterwards he uh, finished his career 10 years ago. His mind is still 10 years ahead of mine when it comes to the football pitch. Um, he's already thinking about where to pass the ball before I've even realised that the ball's going his way. Um, it was really cool to play against him though and cool to play against his team. They're, they won. I think it was three nil. It was two nil. Two nil. Yeah, the third goal was offside. Yeah. Third goal was offside. Well, that, that's right, then, isn't it? That saves a bit of saves a bit of face for us. But um, yeah, it was brilliant. It was really good. Uh, my feet are very sore now. I was in centre midfield and did a lot of running, and uh, yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> and uh, you, you got a chance to um, interview Maurizio um, for your paper. What, what mm. did you make of him when you had your chance to, to speak to him? He was. Uh, he seemed very relaxed, very comfortable, um, and he had, he had, I was struck by the, f- the fact he, he had a lot of ideas for the club, seemed very at ease 
Well, not not at ease with how the um, start has gone for Southampton, but um, he seemed very confident in himself that things will improve sooner rather than later. He seemed uh, to have set a lot of belief in, in what he's trying to do at the club. Knows that it's very rare that these things turn around and head in the right direction that he wants them to immediately or at once. Um, and yeah, he was, he was very interesting to talk to about football. Overall, obviously, he's had a very distinguished career and Southampton is the latest part of that. Yeah, um, I mean, presumably with your job at the Mail, you've had a chance to interview lots of, kind of players and coaches before. You know, how does he kind of stand out or what makes him different from other coaches or, or who's he similar to? He, I, who to compare him to? I, I, the good thing about this job is that certainly when you meet the characters in the Premier League level, there's no two that are, in my opinion, very similar. That's, that's what makes, in my opinion, the Premier League what it is. Everyone's got their own individual sort of, or their, their, own, individual, their own sort of self, which makes it what it is. Um, with, with Pellegrino particularly, that was interesting was when he talks about the idea of defending himself. Obviously, has played at an extremely high level achieved a lot in the game as a player before he's become a coach so from that perspective I personally always enjoy it when you when you've got someone that's been there as a, as a player and carried that over into success as a manager on the sidelines I always always listen to how they break down the side of the game that they were involved in as a player and that that to me was what I, I found particularly interesting yeah in the answers that he gave me he was quite philosophical about um you know the responses I think and he, he seems to be kind of a, a big thinker and perhaps mm. understands that you know not everything in football is totally under control and mm. there, are, there are random elements to the game. Is, is that quite usual? Or? Um, yeah, I think so. I think the thing is, is, I think I agree with you firstly as well. I, on reflection, definitely got, got that vibe. Um, I think that I think that a lot of I think a lot of Premier League managers these days accept that the standard of opponent who they play and the physicality of the game now it always means that there are circumstances that you can't control things can always change during the match teams are good at reducing others to their level um, and yeah I, I would say that on reflection and thinking about it that is definitely something that I think a lot of managers now share that perspective yeah. whether they openly admit it quite as much I don't know but um, yeah alright well great thank, cool. you, very thank you very much so, uh, so I'm now sat with uh, Greg Bukowski um, from The Guardian and some of you who listen to football podcasts may, may recognise his voice from The Guardian Football Weekly podcast. Greg, what did you make uh, of our day at Southampton today? I really enjoyed it. Um, it's obviously been quite a long time since I was knocking around training grounds with such good facilities and uh, stroking the ball around in midfield. But um, yeah, really enjoyed it. and. We didn't disgrace ourselves. We uh, we lost two 0 Put a creditable performance in, I thought. Yeah, I was kind of expecting us to get pretty pretty battered. But yeah, um, but I don't think the players we were up against weren't quite as good as I thought they might be. I yeah. think that's because uh, um, Minister Pellegrino spoke about this. How he they have a, a weekly game with all the backroom staff, and that includes everybody. So I don't think every single one of those players we were playing against had had some kind of uh, background in professional football. I think some had other roles, and uh, and they were the ones that you needed to put under pressure because they could give you the ball back quite quickly. If yeah. You did. Did we ever have any chance of scoring, considering that um, Kelvin <laughs> Davis, uh, who you yeah. know all the listeners will know about his Saints career, he's obviously now a coach there. Yeah. We didn't really trouble him. Did, no, did we, we didn't. We didn't. At the end, I, the ball broke nicely to me on the edge of the box, and uh, I took a touch, and I, I thought I connected with it really well, but it got blocked within about two yards of leaving my foot. So I'll never know where that ball might have ended up. You know, probably in Kelvin Davies' arms. But, yeah. You know, but I'd like to think he wouldn't. And um, I mean, you had a chance to speak to yeah. uh, Maurizio uh, before the game. W what did you make of him? He's really zen like he seemed really philosophical and very different to a lot of other Premier League managers I think it's quite refreshing I thought to have somebody who seems very thoughtful in a position at you know pretty decent sized Premier League club uh, and I, I thought I hope it works out for him because the Premier League kind of is such a doggy dog world 
um, you don't really get thinkers you, and, and, right. and I hope he remains unruffled and can kind of uh, carve out a niche for himself as a as a, a kind of a, a thinking man's manager you know yeah I guess that I mean there's a there's perhaps a bit of a challenge obviously <clears throat> Southampton aren't performing necessarily as well as you'd expect them to this mm. season do you think he might lack a bit of the the bite that is needed for a Premier League manager do you, having met him do you, you could, well, could you see him getting I mean, it depends how it depends how the players are rece- uh, whether the players are receptive to what we saw I mean as journalists he's obviously a very nice person to speak to because he's thoughtful and thinks about what he's about to say before he says it um, with professional footballers young lads whether they respect that or not I don't know but he seemed really uh, reflective and I did think it was interesting that he spoke about um, not necessarily expecting to win every game and not be on the front foot in every game because that's not football. In football you do lose and you know you come up against teams who are better than you and the probability is that you'll, you'll, you'll lose that game but it's how you react and I, it's just how he gets that message across to the players. Maybe you know maybe he can get that message across to the players and it will work for Southampton because I, I, I asked him about um, the game at Anfield. He's trying to form, he keeps talking about identity and he's trying to get an identity with his Southampton team and he's, you know, he's obviously not got that yet. I was like, well, is it a bit of a struggle when you, you kind of, you want to forge this and then you, you're up at Anfield and you're going to be under the cosh probably and maybe not have as much of the ball. So what is that identity? Is it more of a kind of backs to the wall, um, battling identity or, you know, then it changes obviously in games you maybe expect to win or have more of the ball in so but he, he just seems such a he seems so calm and collected when he was speaking so we'll I suppose time, I suppose time will tell Southampton the mid-table they won't want to go much lower though No I, I mean I suppose if results don't pick up and, and we don't kind of end up you know, mid or top half of the table he, he may not even get a full season to to you know Give his kind of philosophical thinking man's way of uh, football management no, in the Premier League, no, and, that, uh, and I think that would be a shame. But I understand that's just the nature of, of football everywhere. I suppose that's not even the Premier League. But it, it, it obviously worked at Alaves, um, and he did he did speak about how it's he finds you know man, management is a challenge, and like you know he's come to the Premier League, and so he's speaking in a in a second language now, and he's having to re- really think hard about what he says and to journalists but probably to his team and in team talks as well um, but it's you, you get the impression he cares yeah. like he does care he just doesn't he just shows it in a different way um, and I, I was struck by when we were playing in the game how um, all the the backroom staff who he was playing with they were kind of treating him as if he'd been there a lot longer than a few months like it's almost like he'd been there five or ten years and oh there's the gaffer and there's you know the cook there's the the conditioning man it was just like it, 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 he's obviously got a good relationship with with his backroom staff and that's important I suppose to get the respect of the players yeah and, and it's it's interesting that despite the way despite the fact that results haven't been going Southampton's way in, in yeah. recent weeks it didn't feel like the club had a kind of cloud sat over it you know a lot of people talk about it being you know, very depressing especially if you lose just before an international break but mm. it didn't seem to have that vibe there at the at the training ground no I, I suppose there's been a lot of focus on other clubs this season <laughs> so uh, West Ham Everton um, Crystal Palace early on in the season yeah. so Southampton have been quietly just you know, going about the business for good and bad um, and they've got a new manager as well and I suppose that's maybe that's benefited him that there's been a lot of attention on other clubs maybe the focus will be on Southampton if they struggle to to get out of um, a rut if they, if, if they in fact end up in one but I, I just I, I feel like he, he's really thinking hard about how to how to change the style of play so they can maybe be a bit more offensive and 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 not quite as as laboured maybe when they're in possession. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll see. I, I did. I thought I thought he came across well though. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Greg. Cheers. So there we have it. That was uh, my trip 
uh, down to Staplewood and a chance to meet uh, Maurizio Pellegrini. Um, yeah, on reflection, looking back at the day, um, the playing football with the coaching staff and having a, a, I suppose, a walk around the Staplewood campus, seeing the way that they do things, seeing the, the, the pitches going all the way up from schoolboy level up to the first team and having a look at some of the first team facilities. All of that was was really really great fun um getting a chance to meet uh some of the coaching staff as well uh had a little chat with kelvin davis that was great um chatting to the sex photographer and various other people from the club was all like really really good fun um i do feel it was a, a bit of a shame that we didn't get a chance to really get in depth um with Maurizio and you know when we had the chance to speak to him it was always with quite a big audience of people around um I mean you can hear photographers in the background taking photographs you can even hear someone drying their hands in the gents toilet just next door to where we were uh, speaking to him um uh, and I actually wonder you know how different uh would the answers you would get from Maurizio be um if it was kind of after his time at Southampton so let's say you know, five, 10 years down the road, we actually get a chance to meet up with him and chat to him. I think we'd get an awful lot more in terms of what he was feeling at the time, what sorts of pressure that he felt he was under and, and perhaps the struggles of trying to impose his identity on the team and, and get them playing it in the way that he, he wants them to play, which is clearly something uh, that he's not managed uh, to do yet. And, um, you know, I kind of look back on this and I actually wonder how long um, Maurizio is going to get in the role. You know, we have new owners at the club. Um, results have not improved at all. And uh, Pellegrino was obviously appointed on the back of, of an idea that we were going to be playing slightly more attacking football. Um, we were going to be giving more of our youngsters a chance and getting, you know, be able to see some of those youth team players make a progression into the first team uh, and we haven't really seen that yet and uh, someone showed me a statistic the other day about how uh, Maurizio Pellegrino's first 12 games in the Premier League uh, have exactly the same goals scored goals against points wins draws etc as the last 12 games under Claude Puel and um, I really think it was the kind of latter stage of, of last season that, that lost Puel his job. Um, the results weren't particularly bad, actually, on, on reflection, looking back at the season, but it was more the style of play and, and the way how the season kind of petered out after having, you know, such highs earlier on the season and, you know, beating into Milan and getting uh, to the EFL Cup final as well. So um, I guess it remains to be seen whether we're going to get to see what Maurizio Pellegrino is about, whether he's going to get a full season or not. Um, the guy is a nice guy. Uh, whether that makes him a good Premier League manager or not, uh, I, I suppose that, that remains to be seen. Um, but as one of the most important things I think I, I need to do is actually say thanks to everyone who took part uh, in this podcast. Um, big thanks to Virgin Media who organised the day, Jamie Clark and Dave uh, and their team that put on the, the trip for me to go down and uh, meet Pellegrino and the rest of the, the coaching staff. And also Jack Bazantz, uh, Greg Bukowski, Tony Husband, um, all for you know, taking part in the podcast as well. And of course, you know, Southampton Football Club for inviting us, ha having us in, and Maurizio Pellegrino himself as well for speaking to us, even if it was only for a few minutes and answering our questions. Um, of course, if you want to get in touch with the podcast, uh, you can do so via all the usual methods. So if you'd like to email us, it's saintsfcpodcast at gmail.com. If you want to tweet us, it's at saintsfcpodcast. Um, and of course, if you fancy leaving a review and letting us know what you thought of this episode, uh, please do that on whatever application you like to listen to your podcasts on. Um, so that's it from, from me for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly different uh, Saints FC podcast. Probably back to the usual format uh, next time. Uh, but for now, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>